Hello all and welcome back to the new Cork Stats YouTube channel with your host, the big dude with the big mouth from the big apple, b -b 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 big Johnny Stud coming to you worldwide out of Brooklyn, New York. You could follow my work on Twitter at MLB Moving AVG or just type in MLB Moving Averages into that blue bird Twitter machine. You can get it me any time of day, any day of the week. Thank you to everybody that's followed along, the comments, the feedbacks, and the DM and stuff. I really do appreciate it. As I kind of take on this new venture, I like having the charts here to give some visual representation, but also to provide those objective data points that I'm using to kind of validate my own argument. So without any further ado, let's dive right into today's topic, and it's Mad Max Scherzer, old blue eye, the chairman of the board, and whether or not we could trust drafting him way up at the top of the end of that first round or beginning of the second and exactly where he slots. Let's look at last year for the 37-year-old righty. He was phenomenal. And if you're new to my work, what I generally like to do is kind of segment players and teams into compartmentalized statistical baskets. The hope being that no kind of single stat will tip the scale and make us make a bad decision always we want to be proactive rather than being reactive in our decision making so let's take a look at 2021 and just how good bad max was he was phenomenal 246 era 0.86 whip sierra and fip both below three x fip 3.24 which is excellent deserved era at 2.2 Two eight a 184 batting average against all important OPS below 600 at 570 247 Woba 262 X just jumping off the page you jump into discipline which is the second basket so let's stop for a second and just look at the way we're going to be laying these things out we want to look at our surface stats and batting averages those a lot of times are output stats then we want to look at disciplinary metrics elevation and batted ball statistics to give us an idea of what's going on under the hood let's get back into the discipline man who does it better than max 34 percent k rate to only five percent walk 28.9 percent k minus walk in a league where being over 20 is a sign of being excellent wow the swinging strike rate up over 17 csw over 33 that your cold strikes plus whiffs anything over 30 is excellent 33 pop it off the page his chase rate, a couple ticks above average, and his in-zone contact rate below 80% at 78.7. The idea being Max can make you chase or he can beat you in the zone. When a pitcher can beat you in or beat you out, it adds a true element of domination. Max has been awesome. The elevation basket, as I know, where some people begin to get worried. 33% ground ball, 48% fly ball. However, not all fly balls are created equal. Max keeps his EV on fly balls and line drives down around 85 Forces a lot of infield flies. That number is up at 10%. That in line drive rate is at 18. That's a thing that I'm really looking at in the elevation basket when paired with the fly balls to see if he's in trouble. The home run rate is in check for Max as always, below average. Fastballs lead to home runs when they're up in the zone, a characteristic of power pitchers that we see. I really try not to throw the baby out with the bathwater because of a couple of solo home runs. Remember, no one is perfect. When you don't walk and then you give up a home run, it's really not going to kill you. So across all of our baskets, Max was awesome. His hard hit rate, both on fan graphs and stat cast, was at 34.5%. And if you're unfamiliar, this is what people come to me for, the nuance and the context and a better level of understanding understanding the reason that you sometimes hear hard hit rates quoted being different is because they're being accounted differently on different sites when you go to fan graphs they use baseball information solutions there is a subjective element Statcast or baseball savant uses a raw 95 mile an hour metric for exit velocity to determine hard hit balls people often ask me which is the best the best is to have both when they're both excellent there's really nothing to worry about the bow rate was up at eight maybe a bit worrisome 340 wobacon certainly doable all the rest of the bad ball stuff just really excellent there was not a hole in the armor for max and that leads me into the first point for him as we're trying to take a look at this pitcher overall something that i often refer to in my handicapping work unfortunately it's generally behind the paywall which is kind of why i like doing this now I'm giving people a look at what we're doing really digging in to all the details and when i've mentioned a pitcher being split proof i generally mean that they post a sub 300 wova at home 
on the road versus lefties and righties. Well, Max, we're going to need a new category for because he's at sub 265 in all four splits. Got to give it up to old Blue Eye with a sub 600 OPS in all four splits as well. What's the first thing we want to look at when we're trying to look forward? For me, and you've seen in my prior work, it's the fastball. So let's check out the velocity for Max. It's been steady. So for me, if you're going to mention aging without a drop in velocity, I'm really not too concerned. Once we get past the velocity, the next thing we were all looking at, especially after last year, is the spin rate. Now, we're not here to neither exonerate or convict anybody. That's not the point. We're analysts looking at objective data points. We know there was a crackdown. Some pitchers had undeniable spin rate changes. If you're interested in what I'm talking about, check out the two videos that I did this week. Some people, it's hard to deny. And when we look at the spin rate for Mad Max, what do we get? It's really steady month over month. You can see it generally unaffected after the crackdown so we don't want to overreact to this but it's definitely good news to see unaffected we can continue moving on something else i talk about and i spoke about in my other videos is circling pitchers that have a targeted approach what i mean is individual pitches being used against single-handed hitters and the reason you like that so much is, one, it generally implies a pitcher has a deep enough arsenal to pick and choose, right? Some pitchers only have one excellent pitch, and if you don't have it, you could be in a lot of trouble. So one thing is it kind of it, uh, shows an expand, expanded arsenal, let's say, but also it's generally because those are really effective. So let's take a look at Max and his targeted approach to righties. He throws the slider to right-handers only. We're talking plus 97% of his offerings since 2019. That is pretty much exclusively thrown to righties this year. That was an awesome pitch. Again, if you're new, I've tried to develop my own triple slash when describing individual pitches. It's usage, x-slug, and whiff rate. So I can give you an idea of how often it's deployed, what kind of batted ball contact there was, and then swing and miss. You know, all so important. 20% use, 309 x whiff with a 49% whiff rate. Yes, I had to go check it twice. Max is amazing. I went back all the way to 2019, checking the slider thrown to lefties only. 1,350 times a 27% swinging strike rate with a 43 CSW. Wow, phenomenal stuff. And a look at why Max has done so well at righties. He's using that slider against him effectively. He must not be comfortable using it against lefties and kind of dropping it in the bread basket where they could turn on it and pull it. So Max stays away from that. What is he doing versus lefties? Let's take a look. His targeted approach versus lefties includes the cutter and the curve. So here we have the cutter being used at 97% of the time. The lefties sound familiar. In 2021, let's check out the, the triple slash, 9% use, but this is why you have to be careful with general overall metrics. 9% use, you should say, oh, that's like a tertiary pitch. Maybe it's a throwaway pitch. No, it's exclusively used for lefties, so it's not a tertiary pitch. It's a secondary pitch for lefties. 9% use, 451 X slug, 28% whiff. Really not great. That's his best pitch, but he uses it to get up and in on the lefties make them uncomfortable and then he switches to the curve 75 percent of his curves go to lefties it's a very good pitch no wonder he uses it to righties as well only an eight percent swinging strike rate i know and you're thinking what it has a 42 percent csw that's ridiculous i have 34 percent cold strike rate on a single pitch max is throwing a pitch that no one even dares to offer at. It is just phenomenal. He has a separate attack plan for each handed hitter. Part of what makes him so effective as we continue to dig. I'm loving what I'm finding. We check out the next slide. I wanted to get into the game log to show you just how impressive he was. Man, if you were following my work all the way back to my athletic days, I kind of... I guess I created a stat. I don't like to take credit for my own stuff. I'm really very modest, to be able to believe it or not. That I called the money start, looking to identify the best starts on an individual basis. Yes, we have the quality start, but if half the pitchers go six innings and half the pitchers can get a 4-5 ERA, is six innings and three earned runs allowed really a sign of greatness? My answer was no, and you could check out my work on it either at The Athletic or FTN Fantasy under Lose the Win Put in my name, it'll pop right up, and you'll see what I'm talking about. So I've determined the money start to be a start of seven innings minimum with two earned runs maximum. 
right now that is a really good start if you get through seven giving up two or less those are the ceiling starts that we want to identify max had 10 money starts in 30 attempts last year through 100 pitches 16 times and went at least six innings 20 out of 30 times he was absolutely phenomenal as far as distance again if you're going to pitch me the argument about age show me a sign of waning duration we haven't seen that happen so i'm just not buying the age argument the last piece i got for you is that playoff run max looked awesome yeah he ate a couple losses nobody around here cares about losses talk about a truly flawed output stat i don't care the ERA around two, the strikeouts were there. Max is excellent, even in the biggest spots against the biggest competition. It's very hard to get away from him. And then if we kind of take a look at the steamer projections, of course, people much smarter than I put these things out, and it's our job then as analysts to kind of digest it and see what we think. Steamer has him down for 189 innings pitched, a 313 ERA with a 1.02 whip, 33% K to 6% walk for me. Those all feel like more or less the floors. It's hard to give Max a floor. I just don't see him ever having a four ERA. I'd see him getting hurt before I assigned him a four ERA. So the 313 sounds about right. I know they don't like to put out any numbers much lower than that. That's fine. A 1.02 whip sounds just about right to me. 33K is on the low end of his action. Same thing for the 6% walk rate, maybe on the higher end of his action. So I am down with these projections totally. 189, if he stays healthy, Max is a 200 inning guy, but 189 as a projection sounds right for me. That makes him the fourth ranked pitcher as far as war, if we're using projections, behind only DeGrom, Cole, and Burns. So, in conclusion, everybody, there is not a hole in the game, not a chink in the armor for Mad Max, that chairman of the board, old blue eyed man. I am taking him right up there at the very top. I have him slotted third behind Cole and Burns, but in front of the Grom, who I'm not sure I can get behind until I see him throwing that gas. He had so many injuries that he didn't take care of, but I am certainly taking Max over Bueller and Wheeler for the rest of this draft season. So thanks, everybody, for sticking around and picking up what I'm putting down here at the Cork Stats YouTube channel. Remember, please give me a follow on Twitter at MLB Moving AVG. Get up in the comments below. Let me know how I'm doing. What would you like to see added or subtracted? What did you like the most? What did you like the least? And if you have any questions or other players you'd like to see me cover, I'll be right on it because I'm here for you. So I think that'll do it, everybody. Got to say thanks again one more time. Remember to subscribe. I'll catch you on the flip side, everyone. Peace.